Your motherboard is vulnerable to being hacked. Reddit wants to charge $20 million just to use it. And these people did what NVIDIA is too scared to. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Friday, June 2nd, 2023. And again, we're here in Taipei, Taiwan, covering Computex 2023. Huge shout out to everybody who's been checking out our videos during this time. And we've been streaming our entire adventures here in Taiwan. So if you want to come join us over over on Twitch, we have a 13900K RTX 4090 PC giveaway that's going on to help incentivize you to come watch us and everything that we do over on the Twitch stream. But we're going to start off today talking about an incentive that Gigabyte has to install hidden malware on your PC because it's being found out by researchers that millions of Gigabyte motherboards have a BIOS setting that causes them to be vulnerable to backdoor code being implemented on a computer. Part of this is because of how Gigabyte installs drivers on their PCs. Typically, when you have any sort of gigabyte motherboard, when you boot up the PC for the first time in something like Windows, it asks you if you want to install the drivers. And that's part of how the vulnerability takes place, where nefarious actors could use this method to silently install code onto your PC. The researchers have gotten in contact with Gigabyte, and they are working on it at the current moment. But there is no ETA on a firmware fix to bypass this to make it a little bit more secure on that side. So if you do have a gigabyte motherboard, please make sure to disable any sort of installation onto your computer from the actual motherboard itself, which typically references network attached storage. But again, it's vulnerable. So just keep yourself safe. And in case you want to keep your CPU safe and cool, well, today's video is sponsor Asetech, who has been one of the key sponsors that we've here for our Computex 2023 trip. They can do that just for you. We've gotten to see a whole lot of new products here, but some of the coolest ones that we've seen have been made by Asetech. Both the Gala had two over at Li and Li, as well as the Asus ROG Ryujin 3. Both use Asetech's new 8th gen pump system, which has a three phase motor for higher flow and quieter operation. They have larger diameter tubes, a larger hex tubes and tanks, as well as wider and smoother flow paths in the pump to reduce flow impedance. And they have a newly designed square cold plate, which is optimized for the latest AMD and Intel processors. And there's even under the hood system enhancements that have resulted in even quieter operation versus previous generations. We've gotten to see a lot of this stuff on display here at Computex 2023. We even got to see Asetech sim racing stuff over at the Lee and Lee booth. And there's even an upcoming ROG water block featuring Asetech's cooling technology that's not just part of an AIO, but you can hook it up to your own custom loop system. We already have a dedicated video out about the Ryujin 3. We have an upcoming video coming out about the Lee and Lee Galahad. So be sure to check out all of our Computex coverage for that. And check out Asetech's new liquid cooling stuff because it's some of the best in the game. Big thanks to Asetech for sponsoring our trip here to Computex 2023 and this episode of Hot News. We couldn't be here without them. And I can't be on a phone anymore without having it flippable. This is a terrible segue. I'm going with it because Motorola just announced the Razer Plus, which is going to have a whole lot of features without a big price increase. It's going to be launching on June 23rd at $999, and it has a 3.6 inch full outer display, which runs at 144 hertz, can handle 1100 nits, and can basically use nearly every application known to man to actually have a whole lot of functionality on the outside. On the inside, you got a 6.9 inch, 165 hertz, 1400 nit display. The first Front display can be used as a live preview for taking selfies with the actual main camera. I absolutely love this. The fact that it's coming in at $999 and not a huge price bump for having a much bigger screen. I'm looking forward to this. The first hands-on previews that I'm seeing of it are very positive. And after finally getting to experience a Flip 4 in person, I, oof, I really want a foldable phone. I just, I can't explain it. Kyler, you want a foldable phone? I want one. Yeah? Give it. And I say, give it. To UFD Deals, Reese. Yo, happy Friday. Welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. I hope you guys are having a great start to your weekend because we have a great start to today's deals. Starting with the 650 watt 80 plus gold power supply from Superflower. The LEDX3 ARGB is the final piece in the puzzle for those super colorful builds. And for only $84.99 with the included promo code, it is $75 off and the lowest price in 30 days. But then next up, we have the AMD Ryzen 7900X. This 12 core AM5 behemoth is going for only $413.99 with the included 
your promo code making it $135 off and the lowest price in 30 days. And don't forget the Star Wars Jedi Survivor bundle is still active so if you wanted to pick that up that'll save you an extra $70. And with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks Reese. You know what's a bad deal? Paying for you to come to Computex and not having you here. You know what's an even worse deal than that? Paying $20 million just to use Reddit. That's what's coming out with Reddit changing their API access laws and one of the most popular third-party apps for Reddit known as Apollo has found out that the pricing is just going to be simply unreasonable. Reddit announced this API policy change likely in result of all of the data scraping that's been going on to feed these neural nets and all of these AI models. Reddit's one of the repositories that's largest out on the internet for just having unfiltered human speech. And according to the meeting between Apollo and Reddit, it's going to cost about $12,000 per 50 million requests. And based on how many requests Apollo has, which is roughly 7 billion a month, that's going to cost them about $1.7 million per month or $20 million per year. And according to their data, it would cost the average Apollo user about $2.50 to pay for all of these features, just based on the numbers and how it breaks down, even though the Apollo subscription only costs $1.50 a month. So likely they're going to have to either double the subscription fee, Reddit maybe could give them a special API access key, or it might go away altogether depending on how the situation shakes out, but definitely not likely to be free. This is something that we're seeing a lot. Obviously, Twitter changed their API access laws when Elon Musk took over and started charging way more than even Reddit is charging, but it does appear to be a new wave moving forward, even though API access can be used for things that aren't necessarily going to be used in other businesses like AI and data. It does create a tricky situation where I'm not sure what the right answer is, but I don't necessarily think it's the way we're going right now. And I also don't think that about what Meta is doing with the MetaQuest 3, which finally got announced for $500. You can get a mixed reality headset with full color pass through. And it looks like Wolverine scratched the front of it with all of those cameras that are on it. Mark Zuckerberg's calling it the first mainstream headset with high res colored mixed reality. And they're saying it's about twice the speed of the previous Quest 2 in terms of graphics. And it's the most powerful headset yet. But with that, they're also going to be dropping the price of the Quest 2 back down to $300, which was the original price for the Quest 2 at 128 gigs, but then they raised the price. But now with the Quest 3, it's back down. So you're not really getting a discount at all. I don't know why you would buy it. But also there's an upcoming software improvement to the Quest 2 that should increase the performance by about 26% and the GPU performance by about 19%. It's supposed to be launching sometime this year. I'm really confused as to who needs this. Let me know if you understand the use case for the Quest 3. I want to hear you down below in the comments, but you want to know the use case of more VRAM. It's faster and smoother gaming performance and the RTX 3070 has been the highlight of VRAM controversies with a modder being able to install 16 gigabytes onto a 3070 and seeing significantly better gaming performance performance in a few specific titles. And now it turns out they've gone even further by creating a physical switch that allows you to switch between the eight gigabyte model and the 16 gigabyte model. We'll have that video linked in the video description, but you can see that there are several games like The Last of Us and Resident Evil 4 Remake where the eight gigabyte VRAM is just not enough and 16 gigabytes is necessary, but that's not even the most of it, okay? It's not just crazy modders out there. It turns out that even here at Computex, there are companies that are selling an RTX 3070 version with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. This is being displayed on the show floor. There's a video out by Tech Lab with the company GXORE who's selling RTX 3070s with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. However, the display out is eight mini display ports. So this probably isn't necessarily meant for the mass consumer. And GZOR is not necessarily an official partner of Nvidia. They're not necessarily allowed to sell these 3070s directly to customers, but it does doesn't matter. It appears that if people want it, other companies are going to make it. Modders are going to make it happen. And we're going to talk about it because just not enough VRAM for people. These these brave soldiers doing what NVIDIA refuses to do because they want to save a couple bucks to then put it into their AI data center chips, which then they're going to sell for 200, 400, half a million, a trillion dollars. It doesn't matter. NVIDIA is making all the money. Gamers don't necessarily matter anymore. I'm not bitter, sad, or angry about it. And I'm not going to stay here for hot news any longer. We'll catch you back here on Tuesday because we're going to be flying back to South Africa from Taipei in order to pick up Reese some nice, beautiful things because he couldn't be here. Should we get him a gift? We kind of owe him a gift. Oh, we need to get that, that, that chocolate. We have to go back and get Reese the chocolate. 
Reese knows what chocolate I'm talking about. Catlin knows what chocolate I'm talking about. Yeah, okay, great, bye.